I want to thanks again, uh, thank again everyone for joining today. Um, today we're going to be discussing Access Avid Interplay inside Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a very specific workflow for our Interplay clients. Um, I'm Matt McLean, the Marketing Manager at Keycode Media. Uh, the demo today is going to be provided by Daniel Faulkner, Business Development Manager at Marquez Broadcast. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Daniel. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you setting this up and um, looking forward to doing several more deal deals with you guys as we just uh, closed a couple here recently. Um, but just to give you a quick history on Marquis, uh, the company is based out of England and has been around for about 14 or 15 years providing software to move media and metadata in and out of broadcast and post-production environments. So whether it's editing, um, play out, ingest, archiving, you know, tying together with media asset management companies, uh, Marquis has provided software to, to help those um, different systems communicate efficiently. And predominantly we worked with the editing environment and mostly with Avid as historically for whatever reason it's been difficult for our customers to move media and metadata in and out of the Avid environments. And so we've created a core a couple of products to help make that process a bit more seamless. Um, the first is EditBridge, which enables you to search, um, ingest uh, media from the Avid Interplay environment into an Adobe Premiere or After Effects software editor, uh, which I'm going to go into more depth uh, in a little bit. And the second product I wanted just to glaze over is called Project Parking, and essentially that is an Avid project and storage management tool. And so since we work with a lot of Avid customers, they had a need or want to be able to export or archive entire projects. So all the media, all the metadata associated with that project, gather it all up, move it off of their Avid storage onto second tier storage, whether it's disk or tape. And also they had a need that their Avid storage is always full. And so enough customers ask you for something, you got to do it. And so we created Project Parking. And so what that does is, again, take projects, all the media metadata, move it off of the Avid storage, off the production storage, onto second tier storage for either near archiving to disk or to tape. And we found that all of our customers were working in a project for project basis. So they need they wanted a way to archive in that same basis, and so which Project Parking does. The software works with or without Interplay, and we actually just had a win recently with Key Code. Um, the customer is a large TV station that's been around for about 10 or 15 years. Um, they have a large Avid Interplay environment, and they had a need. Some of their workspaces were not indexed. Um, and so they were working in those non-index workspaces, and they had a need to take projects from those workspaces, check them into Interplay, vice versa, and also archive uh, from the Avid ISIS storage to their tape library. And so Project Parking is being installed and is working for those guys uh, quite well for several months. Um, and then storage analysis is a feature of the software. It's my favorite. Um, what that does is it goes out and does a scan of all your project files, all your reference med media, and goes and finds all the media that those references uh, point to and gives you a database um, and presents you with an analysis of uh, how your projects and media, or excuse me, your storage is being managed or mismanaged. Um, and we can find uh, how big your projects are, how many workspaces they span across, as well as finding orphan and duplicate media that your Avid tools just can't seem to find. And so uh, we've, I've got a, uh, a news station in Atlanta that the first weekend that they ran this analysis, they found 10 terabytes of orphan media in one workspace. And so 10 terabytes of ISIS storage, getting that back is very valuable. Um, another client, in, a large client in D.C., told me that they save about two terabytes a month with the storage analysis feature alone. So very valuable tool uh, within the project parking software. Um, it's compatible with any uh, Avid storage, whether it's Avid branded or Facilis or whatever you might have. Um, so we're just looking at the file system, so we don't really care whose brand is on it. 
And then pricing, um, pricing range from 4,500 to 15,000 based on your usable amount of storage. Um, so we can, you know, we have a, a nice play for every level of customer, whether it's a smaller shop or a large enterprise company that has lots of ISIS systems. And then free parking, which is being introduced Friday of this week, um, is a software that you can get from Keycode Media. Um, and you can, it's basically the storage analysis feature by itself. It can show you how your ISIS is being managed or potentially mismanaged. There's no license that you have to get from me or from Marquis. It just works. You just don't have the ability to archive and restore or remove anything. You just get a, a, an idea of what's going on kind of under the hood. Um, so again, we can talk about project parking at a later point, but wanted to really focus on EditBridge. Um, I touched on EditBridge at the very beginning. Hopefully you remember, but if not, here we go. Uh, EditBridge is a software that gives you um, connectivity into the Avid Interplay environment. So it's, there's a panel, which we call Interplay Browse, that communicates with the Marquis software. Um, it gives you, as you can see in the background here, the ability to search your uh, Interplay folder structure as if you were sitting on a media composer. Uh, it looks slightly different, but um, we're trying to marry those up as much as we can. And so you browse through your Interplay folders, you click the one you want, and then you see the list of clips that are located in that folder and we actually have a search window that I'll show you shortly. Um, so whatever codec you're working in, we have a solution. If it's DNxHD or DVC Pro, uh, Premiere actually supports those codecs with the Avid OP Atom wrapper. And so we can uh, essentially ingest an AAF that references the media on the ISIS so you can edit in place from your Premiere client or After Effects with the Avid media on the Avid storage. Um, so very powerful workflow there. If the media or the codec, excuse me, is not one of those DNX or DVC Pro, um, our software will rewrap um, the media into an OP1A that Premiere can handle and you can carry on edit as normal. So that's really the ingest side you, you find your, your clip, you hit a fetch button, and we ingest the file, whether it's edit in place or rewrap, into the Premiere bin, and off you go. Um, second slide, and second of four, so we're almost done here. Okay? Stay, stay focused here, um, is what we call the Interplay Publish panel. And so let's say you've done your editing, and you want to select your sequence and publish that back into Interplay. Uh, create the, as a new asset and check it in. We have this uh, panel here where you see um, in the background these metadata fields which is completely customizable to map um, or match what you have in Interplay so we can add more if you want. Um, and then you hit submit. What will happen is currently Media Encoder will flatten the file and then our software will rewrap it into an OP Atom and create an AF and check that into Interplay. And so now you have a new asset that's searchable, browsable within Interplay as you would expect. Um, so I'm just going to jump over into my Premiere client. Hopefully it's, oh, no, not that. Um, and so I already have it open. As you can see here, um, we're looking at <coughs> our folder structure on Interplay. This is a canned demo. I don't have Interplay hanging out in my closet. Um, so you can select on your folder, um, choose the folder that you want, and you can see the clip list here. Grab, and you can see the different clips. We actually have a search window. Um, there's a quick uh, clip here that I like to use. It's called Aquarium. As you can see, I started typing. It showed up. You select what you want. You hit Fetch. And so what we're doing with Fetch um, is that kicks off a, a process that, hey, if this is DNX HD, which it is, we're going to ingest a, an AF which we have. If it was a different codec, we would have done, we would have shown you a progress bar of the rewrap process. And so I double click on my clip. You can see here, hopefully in the top right screen, um, aquarium, I know you won't see it playing, but you can see the frames changing, hopefully. Um, that's actually editing off the ISIS right now. The, no media has moved. We're just looking and working off the ISIS. So very powerful right there. 
Um, we also um, can ingest a sequence. So you have a sequence within your Avid and you want to work on it. Maybe it was just cut only for whatever reason. You wanted to do some, some work in After Effects. Um, so you bring over the cuts only sequence. I've brought over a sequence, again, that is DNX HD. And you can see here um, on my timeline that, you know, the, the cuts and the, the bits have come over as they were in Avid. And so you can do some um, After Effects work um, or some, some touch-up, whatever you want to do in your Premiere Edit Suite. And then once you're done with that and you want to publish it back to Interplay as a new asset, um, you say Get Access, uh, Get Active Sequence, which we grab in AV Sequence 1. Uh, you can add metadata here or here or wherever else. Again, this is completely customizable. And um, when you hit Submit here, we will uh, kick off a media encoder process to flatten the file. And then the rewrap will happen in the background uh, to the ISIS. And the AF creation will be checked into Interplay automatically. So you have uh, a new asset created into the Interplay database. It's browsable, searchable, like it should be. Um, so that's really the round trip as we call it, ingest um, or pull from the Interplay into the Premiere, as I showed you, um, and then publish back to the Interplay from the Interplay Publish panel. And so that's, that's our round trip. And just to jump back over to our slide, I got one more, two more actually. Um, just a quick summary, Edit Bridge enables you, um, we, what we found was you know a handful of Premiere or After Effects users in each one of our Avid Interplay clients that wanted to utilize Interplay or you know use Avid Media to do some of their work and then publish back to it. And so creating EditBridge enables that seamless integration of Premiere and the Avid Interplay environment. The product was released at NAB this year and we've got a couple of uh, happy customers over in Europe and I'm looking to uh, mimic that over in the U.S. and ho hopefully working with Kiko will enable us to do so. Pricing starting out, um, if you got five seats, this is uh, simultaneous seats, um, 7,500 as you can see, and if you have 10, a little bit more of an enterprise, um, it can be 15 grand and it can scale up um, from there as well. We can keep adding, um, I think, 10 packs of seats for, um, I think it's five grand a 10 pack after the initial purchase. Um, so with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Any questions on hey, edit? Thanks, bridge? Daniel. Edit um, oh. Looks like our uh, first question is about system requirements. Um, can you go over the system requirements for edit bridge? Sure. Um, edit bridge um, needs actually, since I'm here, it's a, there is some server software that um, we, we have that communicates with the Interplay web services and also requires an, an ISIS client manager. Um, but as you can see here for the PC requirements, uh, dual quad core, 12 gigs of RAM, and Microsoft Windows 2008. So nothing crazy, kind of your basic server. Um, but the, the key is the Avid Certified NIC, which our friends at Keycode will obviously take care of getting that sorted, um, and the ISIS client manager that, that matches. Um, so that is the spec for EdBridge. All right, Daniel. Well, thank you for your time today. We want to thank Marquez Broadcast for presenting EdBridge to our Avid Interplay clients. If you guys want any additional information about EdBridge or any other Interplay solutions, please contact Code Media at our website, keycodemedia.com, or over the phone. Thanks so much. Have a good one.